Hello everyone, this is Kuroda giving you a shoutcast and a game between WFZ versus Lin here on Twisted Meadows. Over here we have WFZ spawning as the blue undead player. Meanwhile on the top right hand side of the map we have Lin spawning as the red orc. Now, um, for those of you guys who are looking for my showcase matchups, um, yeah, if you guys are looking for my showcase matchups, and this is actually a showcase match. Ow, ow, that hurt. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Alright, so, um, what I wanted to say is this is actually a showcase match. Uh, what I wanted to point out here was, um, very rarely do I ever get a series that actually has highly rated games. Now, um, these games were both extremely highly rated, and not the highest, but rather high, at least on some of the sites that I um, frequently visit. So I was thinking to myself, you know what, why not check out this game? Hopefully it will be entertaining. Maybe this is a show match, as there was only three players, one observer as, a typic as opposed to the typical five or seven that you have in a typical tournament final. And if that is the case, then the players may go for a little bit more of an unorthodox strategy. Unorthodox strategy is always well appreciated, as we already see a Blade Master coming out against most likely a Death Knight. So, Blade Master versus Death Knight, I take it back. Maybe it's not unorthodox strategies. Maybe it is just straight up random gameplay, randomness of Warcraft 3. Now, one of the reasons why I like Warcraft 3 as I, and I've said it before, is the, the element of chance in the game. Now, you may be saying, why? Why would you want chance in a game? Why would you, why would you, why would you want chance? Don't you always want the better player to win? Well, yes, that is true. I do want the better player to win the majority of the time. But sometimes it's, it's nice to cheer for the underdog. Kind of like if I was to play a grandmaster in chess... There is no, no, no way in heck that I would ever be able to take a game off of him, even if I played a hundred games. But if I was to play poker with um, anyone from the World Poker Tour, if I played a hundred games, even if I'm pretty bad at poker, I can still probably win one of one game out of a hundred. So there is that small chance um, coming in. We are going to see the Blade Master, however, however, picking up double healing salves and a circlet of nobility very quickly and now going after this troll trapper. This is your standard, standard maneuver. The Blade Master trying to get the necessary item off of here. I do believe it is a tome. It is just going to be a tome of intelligence. That is it. It's really looking for a tome of agility or a tome of experience to try and get higher up to level two meanwhile the death knight now creeping by his lonesome self only with skeletal minions coming over as the blade master now lands a windwalk strike oh my gosh wfz is trapped in the corner this is going to be very very bad news death coil now comes in blade master versus death coil oh and wow that unit is so low on hit points does the death knight have enough for a death coil yes he does and there's another death coil only to get another healing salve charge that is potentially game changing as we now look at the death knight the death knight now trying to wander away the blade master coming in and around it is wind walking and what is it going to be doing the blade master trying to find out where that death knight possibly is the death knight i believe he purposely sacrificed himself I, I gotta believe that to be the case. Where is that Blade Master? The Blade Master is now looking for that Death Knight, but the, the Death Knight purposely sacrificed itself here in order to die to some creeps. And by dying to creeps, he denied his opponent experience, and he is going to be able to fully recharge up his Death Knight for a mere 170 gold and a little bit of time. Beautifully done. Um... It's been quite some time since I've actually seen a, a hero purposely throw away uh, or a player throw away their hero in the early game so that it doesn't ga give experience. You can sometimes see this particular tactic used when uh, a player tries to position himself so that a tree of life gets the last hit or a tower gets the last hit on a hero instead of an actual unit. All right, coming around, you can see that the Death Knight still sitting at level 1 does have a lot of charges of Rod of Necromancy. Crypt Fiend is over there. Skeletal Minions will be coming in. There we go. And now the No Wardens will get taken down. All right, no Purge as of yet, at least not on the Skeletal Minions. 
Down goes the Null Warden, and we should be getting to level 2 on this Dark Ranger or Death Knight relatively quickly. Meanwhile, the Death or the Blade Master here continuing the healing salve, critical strikes, trying to take down that Null Overseer. Null Overseer will get taken down here in just a moment. And finally, we see a good item for Lin's Blade Master, Gloves of Haste. Meanwhile, the Death Knight is now sitting at level 2, does have a good bit of mana, now looking to back away as the Death Knight is here against the Blade Master. There's the engagement, and the Death Knight taking a little bit more damage from the Blade Master than he was hoping for. Blade Master getting off a Wind Walk Strike in addition to, I believe, a Critical Strike. Can't rewind the replay, but I'm sure you guys can keep track of what's going on here. Blade Master now going after the Skeletal Minion. It looks like it will get taken down. No! The Crypt Fiends actually doing a little bit of body blocking in order to take that unit down. Meanwhile, the Skeletal Minion is now up as the Skeletal Minion did fall, I believe, at the hands of the Blade Master. 76 mana and rising as we are now looking at what this death knight can do the death knight really hoping to shut down this blade master blade master now walking by getting a little bit too close to that um halls of the dead tower as we are now going into frost nova and frost armor on a lich as the second hero undead players normally get the lich and frost armor because it lowers the dps of a blade master so much anytime you can slow the amount of attacks that a blade master has per second that is a significant decrease in the amount of DPS the Orc Army has. The Orc Army is mainly com comprised of that Blade Master DPS, followed by all the other units just trying to add a little bit more damage. You can see that the Death Knight now coming in, attempting to take down the Rock Golem. Death Knight is still seen at level 2. Uh, what, Skeleto Minion is now getting taken down. And this may be a little bit of a, of a dangerous play here as the Blade Master is going to be coming around the corner. Squirrel of the Beast now ready to go. Claws of Attack plus 6. It looks as though the Ogre Warrior will be falling here in just a second. There it goes. And now all that is left is a couple of Forest Trolls. Those trolls will be falling down, and all that is hap all that is left now is one last forest troll. Meanwhile, back in the center, Lich now on his way to join up with that Death Knight. The Death Knight is still very, very close to level 3, as we're going to see a bit of an engagement come in. All right, there you go. There's a Spirit Link, Blade Master, Death Coil. Is it going to be enough? There is the Hex now onto that Death Knight. Death Knight needs to perhaps use the Squirrel Town Portal. It will be able to get it off just in time. And what is going to be happening next? Nothing to follow up as the Spirit Walker goes into Ethereal form in order to avoid some damage. Skeletal minions still wandering off here to the north. You can see that the Crypt Fiends and the Death Knight now apparently going to make their way in here. Ogre Warrior going to join in on the fight. You can see a little bit of healing coming in from the Obsidian Statue. And this is going to help out tremendously. In addition to the hit points, it will also give more mana to the Death Knight and this Lich. As both sides are still creeping their respective sides of the map. Alright, what item was left behind? Sobi Mask. That may be given to that Shadow Hunter, Shadow Hunter, with a lot of what hexes and a lot of healing waves, much more mana dependent. Then, um, then that Blade Master. All right, there you go, throwing some. I don't know what exactly that is. What is the attack on a Shadow Hunter? That seems like some kind of like troll shuriken uh, making its way out. Let's make our way off over here. You can see the Crypt Fiends are going to try to engage. There are Banshees on the field. Not exactly sure what the Banshees will be for. Perhaps adding in a single uh, factor so that the targets can miss. And if it does miss, that is going to really, really hurt things for that Blade Master. Blade Master cannot afford to lose any any more damage. All right, let's continue to this fight here. You can see a lot of damage. There goes the Obsidian Statue. Blade Master now sitting at level 3. Are we perhaps going to see a healing wave come in here in just a second? There's a Death Coil um, saving a Crypt Fiend. There is a lot of missing on the target. And yes, the Blade Master is constantly missing. There's that Frost Armor. There's a Death Coil to save it again. And that Blade Master is just focusing a bit too much. Level 2 now on the Lich. It does have a Potion of Lesser Invulnerability. And now what is going to... What is that next engagement going to be? The Blade Master trying to make its way in. Obsidian Statue bringing up the rear will be able to heal back up. As we are sitting on fairly even armies. Army supplied is 47 compared to 46. Dead neck and neck so far as the Blade Master wanders a little bit too closely to the main pack 
of the undead army and now will need to retreat. Coming back around to the north side here, this expansion location, that rock golem will get taken down. Shadow Hunter seeing that level 2 should get to level 3 as long as that Blade Master doesn't steal too much experience. It looks as though the Rock Golem taking a licking but keep on ticking so far as that Rock Golem now down to about 113 hit points. It will fall without issue and now we have level 3 on the Shadow Hunter. Level 3 on the Shadow Hunter, level 2 on the Lich, level 3 on the, on the Death Knight. As you can see that there are still Banshees in play. There you go. There's the Dust of Appearance, making sure that no units are nearby. Rune Bracers now being brought over. Not quite sure why. And perhaps those will just get sold as Rune Bracers are not that useful of an item. All right, let's come across back over here. It looks like a Banshee may get taken down. No, there's a Crypt Fiend. Crypt Fiend now taking one. Two hits already. Are we going to get a Critical Strike, in fact? No, we are not. No, we are not, as the Ogre Magi will fall to the Shadow Hunter. Shadow Hunter doing a good job trying to catch up in terms of the hero lead game. Lich is still seeing that level 2 quite a bit away from level 3. Lin is so far much ahead in this matchup. And what is it going to come down to? Undead player does have a lot of piercing damage. You can see that there are Banshees there as well. Orb of Corruption. That is going to be just something to behold. Grunts and Kodos now attempting to just run all the way back home as the Raiders will be perhaps regrouping inside the main base of Lin. All right, give me one moment. All right, my apologies. Sometimes things do get in the way. Let's go ahead and unpause the game as we come back over here. Here's the fight coming in. There is a, now a Pit Lord joining in on the fight. And how did I miss that earlier? As it is the undead tri-hero, the Pit Lord. Has, has he used Howl or is he just attacking with that um, cleaving tack already? I do not know as the units are now all just trying to go into a desperate retreat. All right, the attacks are coming in. You can see damage is being dealt. Uh, the Kodo Beast is trying to get away. There is a healing wave. Do we see an ensnare? No ensnare coming in at all as that Kodo Beast trying to get away. You can see that minus five armor coming in from the Lich as it, in comes another Spirit Link. All right, Spirit Link, a double-bladed uh, sword right there. As you can see that the Destroyer has now once again regenerated hit points and all of a sudden WFZ coming in with a lot of damage just trailing after all of these units. Kodo Beast is now down to 568 hit points. All the units are still fighting together. Grunts and units are now trying to back off. As you can see, what is this? The Blade Master trying to keep it together. All right, Pit Lord now trying to move in here as the Voodoo Lounge is going to get focused down. Already you can see the Fortified Upgrade has come across on the Orc Burrows. That is going to be important. Meanwhile, what is this? A burrowed Crypt Fiend is now nearby. Are we perhaps going to see some Dust of Appearance be purchased? Um, did he spot it earlier? That is the question. Yes, he did spot it. And now Dust of Appearance will be used in order to try to take this down. This looks like it could... Oh no, Ghoul will get taken down here. No Death Coil. As you can see, more damage is being dealt. All right, no dust. Oh, dust of appearance. As you can see, more attacks coming in. There goes another headhunter. As so far, the destroyers. Oh, another headhunter popping out in just in time, only to get taken down again. There it goes. And the death knight now sitting at level three. Meanwhile, all the units need to come back in here. All of a sudden, Lin is in trouble. Lin felt like he was in much of much control throughout the game, only to fall behind now as an orb of lightning should allow the Blade Master to take down these destroyers relatively quickly. All right, there is an ensnare on the Obsidian Statue. Perhaps the best target to hit as that Obsidian Statue cannot get healed by Death Coil. Only going to get healed by the Unholy Aura very, very slowly. There's the Ensnare. Blade Master going straight for that target already. No, no Frost Armor on there right now. Howl now coming in. Damage reduction critically as there is only 118 point critical strike. All right, Banshee comes in. There is a, I believe there was a Disenchant of some sort. There a Devour Magic as <coughs> both sides are still fighting it up. All right, Banshee still dealing damage here somehow. All right, Kodo Beast now a chomping on a Crypt Fiend, trying to stay alive. It looks like it will get taken down as a Death Knight now using a Squirrel of Talonpour to get back. And there is that Howl of Terror at level 1. All right. Um, in the words of Bunny, the Pit Lord is so cute. All right, the Pit Lord, one of those, um, one of those tavern heroes, undead tavern heroes, very, very strong. 
very good at reducing the amount of damage the Blade Master does with that Howl of Terror. And also, coupled with that Lich, may be a very good way to shut down the Blade Master's damage. All right, there you go. Uh, Blade Master quickly trying to run by, taking a little bit of damage there. It is cursed. It is dust of appearance. And what is going to be happening next? are going to come back in and look to see if they can deal even more damage. Lich is ready to go, sitting at level 2, almost at level 3. Perhaps going to get a Frost Armor in there as well, as now the battle is going to continue on. Orc Burrow taking a bit of damage already. Peon's now trying to get over there in just in time. Meanwhile, where is the rest of the Orc Army? You cannot allow these Burrows to get taken down, as they do give experience. Lich now very close to level 3, as more damage is still coming in. Death Knight... Sitting at level 4, but no scroll of town portal. This is pretty much an all-in attempt here, as the reinforcements will get cut off. Lin now trying to get in position. Here we go. Oh, what's going to be happening? And what is this? What is Lich's unit doing? As you can see, the attacks now coming in. There is the jump into the destroyer form, as there is some devour magic trying to devour all of that. Spirit Link. All right, Krippy now getting chomped on there. Both sides are still fighting as the Lich down to... 243 some odd hit points. Both sides still fighting up. There's another healing wave trying to stay alive. Blade Master doing its best, but it is de dealing a very, very difficult time as everything it wants to attack ends up getting frost armored. All right, there is the crit fiend now burrowing as there is the dust of appearance to try to reveal it. It looks like it will get revealed. 120 point critical strike continuing the fight as more Kodo beasts are getting chomped down on. All right, a new obsidian statue has joined it on the fight. There it is. Now we see level 3 on the Lich. More Frost Armor coming in. A Howl of Terror has not come across yet as the Blade Master is still dealing full damage. Both sides fighting as a Frost Nova lands onto that Kodo Beast. Kodo Beast is going to get taken down. Krippy now back out again. And there is another Burrow, the Blade Master, I believe, now out of Dust of Appearances. However, the Lich low on hit points. Potion of Invulnerability still come, trying to come across. Obsidian Statue trying its best to try to heal all the units. Blade Master going to take it down. But what is this? Blade Master going up against the Destroyer. The Destroyer, Dust of Appearance now coming in as the Blade Master now is invulnerable for a small amount of time. Okay, Lich sitting at level 3 out of mana. You can see no more Destroyers. Crippings getting taken down. Both sides suffering heavy, heavy casualties as there goes another Troll Headhunter. Units are trying to come and stay together. Blade Master is revealed as the Blade Master now unrevealed. The Dust of Appearance has come to an end. All right, Shadow Hunter needs to get off another healing wave. Maybe able to do so in just a moment. Death Knight unable to get out, land a death coil at all. As you can see, more damage coming in. The Raider now down to what? Negative four armor, taking extra damage per hit. That is not something you want to be seeing as the Crypt Fiend and the Banshee may get caught in midfield. Oh, units getting caught in transit. This is not what you want to be seeing as the Banshee will get taken down. There it goes. Is the Dust of Appearance on the Shadow Hunter? No, it is not. Obsidian Statue is nearby there. Here comes the rest of the units. Crypt Fiend is now back out and ready to go as the Obsidian Statue needs to give mana and more, more, yeah, more importantly, mana in this situation as they are now currently low. So far, WFC doing a great job. Lin now being forced to back off here. And it finally looks like we will get a little bit of a reprieve in the fighting. WFZ with this Temple of the Damned only sitting at 39 over 60 supply or 60 food. Meanwhile, Lin sitting at 47 over 50 has the larger army, but will he be able to hold on to this? Blade Master did give a clarity potion to that Shadow Hunter, and with that, the Shadow Hunter should be in a much, much better position. More healing waves are necessary. Is it going to benefit? It has that Sobi mask, which is giving it very, very healthy mana regeneration. Coming down across to the bottom, the Pit Lord does have a Peer Up of Vitality. A Peer Up of Vitality giving him 975 hit points, making him a very nasty, tanky hero as well, who joins in on that fight. Blade Master now looking to come in. He has a Talisman of Evasion and Claws of Attack. That is all very, very good damage, even before a Kodo Beast does come around to boost that even further. All right, what is going to be happening next? You can see damage is being dealt. Wind walk, it is now going to be able to slip away. What is happening here? Dust of appearance. Is the Blade Master going to get caught here? And that is the question as you now see an engagement coming in over here. Blade Master does have good sight on this 
and is the Death Knight. Yes, there is the Blade Master. It is going to be revealed. Obsidian Statue taking a lot of damage. This is not good. That Obsidian Statue needs to stay alive. That is a critical point in that army as it is now a destroyer. Not nearly as good. He wants to keep it as an Obsidian Statue, but unable to as WFZ may be forced to get a, lose another Obsidian Statue. That is going to be a hard, hard loss. Down it goes but at the cost of a raider and some other units. Ogre Magi coming in. This is a much larger army to fight off just because the creeps are still joining in on this fight. Crypt Fiend now taken down, and this is a major turnaround. Lin using the creeps to his advantage, and this may just be a bad play by WFZ. Is, is he going to be able to take down the Blade Master though? Blade Master now down to 191 hit points, 177. Lich is still nearby. What's happening here? Healing wave coming across. There's the Howl of Terror. So much damage as the Blade Master down to 300. Another healing wave should be coming in momentarily. All right, Grunts and Crypt Fiends. Both sides fighting it, a, fighting a lot. Crypt Fiend may try to burrow itself. Needs to burrow itself. What's happening here? Lich low on hit points and WFZ going to lose this fight and perhaps the game after losing that lich and there is the gg beautifully played um wow i took a i yeah that was a great great comeback and things were just neck and neck throughout um picking up that pit lord was monster or instrumental in trying to slow down that blade master army however that last fight next to the creep camp was very problematic that caused a lot of problems there and that simply, simply turned the tides for Lin. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed game one.